Tonight, will Tropical Storm Isaac have any effect on university activities? Plus, the SGA is looking for new senators. Stay tuned. Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus with news from Troy University locations around the world. This is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Trojan Vision Nightly News for August 27, 2012. I'm Judson Garner. And I'm Bailey Majors. Thank you for joining us this evening. The Gulf Coast is preparing for the arrival of Tropical Storm Isaac, but as of right now, the storm is not expected to make much of an impact in the Troy area. This morning, the university announced that based on the current path, all Alabama campus operations will continue as normal throughout the week, adding that all students are encouraged to pay attention to changing weather conditions. Should severe weather approach any of the campuses, notifications will be made through email postings and text messages. Troy students have the chance to learn about ways to, say, to stay safe on campus. Tonight, tonight and tomorrow night, Troy University Housing will hold their annual campus safety meeting in the Claudia Crosby Theater at 7 p.m. Students will be able to hear from a variety of guest speakers, including Troy City Police and Fire Department, the University Police Department, and Troy's, campus, Troy's Save Project. To topics for discussion include fire safety, counseling, and night safety. Not only will you be hearing from police officers that will talk to you about that safety aspect, but we'll also be uh, have, have people here to speak to our students about needs they may have and they're just a, their adjustment to, to coming to school at Troy. Once again, the annual campus safety meeting will be tonight and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the Claudia Crosby Theater. All students are encouraged to attend and both meetings are a double passport event. Troy University resident students have the chance to be a part of Troy University Student Government Association as this week the SGA is taking applications for seats in Senate. Hunter Robinson give us, gives us a look at why they are looking for senators so early in the semester. Troy University Student Government Association is looking for students to represent the resident halls in the SGA Senate. The election is September 5th, but applications are due this week. However, electing resident hall representatives in the fall is somewhat unusual for the SGA, as this is usually taken care of in the spring. I had an issue last year um, where we couldn't host our housing senate elections in the spring because not everybody had been assigned to their housing assignment for the fall uh, in the spring in time for those elections. So now we're just hosting our residence hall elections. Thompson says it is important to get good representation for the dorms in the Senate due to those senators' proximity to the students. So we feel like that the biggest needs that students are going to feel like they have to voice on campus deal with our on-campus residence halls. Um, I spoke at um, RA training earlier this fall and stressed the importance of our residence assistants knowing their senator, knowing who their senator for that residence hall is, being able to get in touch with them. Um, so we feel like that our residence hall senators are the most important members of our Senate because they have a direct line of communication to the people that they represent. Thompson tells us what qualities he feels will make a good candidate for senator. Um, somebody who genuinely cares about serving the needs and well-being of the student body. We want somebody who's not only going to be able to listen, but somebody who's going to want to be able to go the extra mile in serving our student body um, and their needs that they have. Applications are now available in the SGA office, but students must meet certain requirements to be eligible for a seat. In order to be a residence hall senator, you have to maintain a 2.25 GPA. You have to be a full-time student at Troy University, and you also have to reside in the residence hall that you plan on representing. Uh, we have applications available right now in the SGA office. Um, they're due this Friday the 31st. Um, the application fee is $5, um, so they can pick up an application and just turn that in by Friday. Hunter Robinson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The resident senator election will be next Wednesday, September 5th from 8 to 5 in the SGA office on the second floor of the Trojan Center. And while the SGA vacancy election is still a week away, voters will hit the polls tomorrow in the city of Troy to decide municipal leadership for the next four years. Not everyone will be, par be participating in the election. However, there are only three contested seats on the city council. The mayor and District 2 and 4 are running unopposed. Polling places for Districts 1, 3, and 5 will open tomorrow morning at 7 and close at 7 p.m. tonight. The polling place District 1 is...
One is the Academy Street Gym for District 3, the Troy Rec Center, and District 5, the Pike County Courthouse. State in Gulf Shores, coastal Alabama is under a mandatory evacuation order as Isaac churns through the Gulf of Mexico. A state of emergency covers the entire state. Governor Robert Bentley has told the National Guard to be on standby. And in Montgomery, the Justice Department announced it will monitor municipal elections Tuesday in Lynette Reform and Phoenix City to ensure the compliance with the 1965 Five Voting Rights Act. The Justice Department said it is assigning federal, federal observers to polling places in the three towns. The Voting Rights Act prohibits discrimination in elections based on race, color, and membership in minority language groups. And in Mobile, police say a suspect was arrested in the slaying of a Philadelphia police officer gunned down on his way home from work. A police spokesman says 19-year-old Chancier McFarlane was taken into custody yesterday by law enforcement personnel in Mobile in the August 18th slaying of Officer Moses Walker, Jr. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, the Trojans saw success over the weekend on the road. Danielle Percival will have the details on that and more when she joins us with sports. But first, new research finds a link between the weight of breast cancer survivors. We'll have more on that story after the break. I was afraid of that. Well, guess it's time to get you fixed. Your pets will start fooling around sooner than you think. Go on, get out of here! Accidental litters lead to millions killed in shelters each year. Help prevent more. Fix at month four. Bad trainers. I want to work in the NFL. Troy University's College of Health and Human Services prepares students for high demand careers of today and tomorrow. Careers offering attractive pay and the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others. My courses aren't just classwork. I've worked with the Department of Human Resources to put my skills to work with helping people. I couldn't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. From the high definition videos of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now for a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world. We'll go to Judson Garner at the Global News Desk. Judson. Thanks, Bailey. New research finds a link between the weight of breast cancer survivors and the chances of getting breast cancer again. Teresa Garcia reports from Los Angeles. Gail Brown wanted to tip the scales in her favor after battling breast cancer. The whole lifestyle just uh, changed. Not a diet, but a lifestyle. Brown's doctor is the lead author of a new study that shows heavier women are more likely to have their cancer come back. Patients in this study who were obese had about a 30 percent higher risk of having a recurrence of their breast cancer and a 50 percent higher risk of dying from their breast cancer. Researchers at the Montefiore Einstein Center for Cancer Care study close to 5,000 women. They suspect hormones, higher insulin levels and inflammation, which are associated with extra body fat, could play a role in driving cancer growth. The link is strongest in women who have breast cancer that is fueled with the hormone estrogen. That's the most common type in the United States. This is important because a, a very relatively simple intervention, um, dietary intervention, exercise, that leads to weight reduction could have a profound impact in reducing the risk of recurrence for thousands of women. At 65, Brown has been cancer free for five years. I'm trying to do all the things that will help me live a happy and healthy life. She's lost 30 pounds and she's hoping to keep the weight off to keep cancer away. Teresa Garcia, CBS News, Los Angeles. Tropical Storm Isaac is moving through the Gulf of Mexico and could be a hurricane by the time it hits land. Many people in its path are clearing out. Drew Levinson has the latest from New Orleans. 
People in Louisiana's Lafouche Parish are boarding up their homes as Isaac closes in on the Gulf Coast. There are evacuation orders for some low-lying areas, including St. Charles Parish, just west of New Orleans. But not everyone is leaving. It worries the heck out of me, but I think I'm going to stay. Others are gassing up and getting out of town. We kind of went through Katrina and kind of, you know, had bad experience with that. Isaac is expected to make landfall along the northern Gulf Coast Tuesday, the day before the seventh anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Isaac brushed past the Florida Keys Sunday and is now in the Gulf where it is expected to become a Category 1 hurricane. We still think because of the warm waters and the relatively weak wind shear in the atmosphere that it would be able to strengthen a little bit in the day to day and a half it has left centered over water. Officials warn Isaac could bring 6 to 12 foot storm surges and dump up to 18 inches of rain in some areas. The slow moving nature of this storm means that there are many parts of our state that could be inundated with tropical storm or heavier winds or heavy rainfall for several, several hours at a time. Airlines are warning that Isaac could affect travel here in New Orleans as well as other spots along the Gulf Coast. Carriers are already waiving their fees, allowing passengers to reschedule flights. Oil production already stopped on rigs in the Gulf, cutting 17 percent of the country's daily oil production. Now about 15 million people in Isaac's path are preparing for the storm's landfall. Drew Levinson, CBS News, New Orleans. GOP delegates were told to ride out the storm in their hotels today after Tropical Storm Isaac forced the postponement of the Republican National Convention. Four days of speeches will now be squeezed into three. Danielle Nottingham has the latest from Tampa. In session and called to order. There was a symbolic convention opening and a very swift adjournment. Republican National Convention stands in recess. Tropical Storm Isaac came close enough to Tampa to force the cancellation of today's activities. Even though there were no big speeches, the Republicans launched a debt clock to show how much the government will borrow during the convention week. I think it's very important to look at it every day and look at it climbing every day. While Isaac is no longer a big threat to Tampa, there are concerns about holding the usually ruckus convention as a storm bears down on the Gulf Coast. If they're in trouble, you know, we're going to have to tone it down a little bit, and that's okay. In New Hampshire, Mitt Romney said he hopes those in Isaac's path are spared major destruction. He's still heading to Tampa. Got a great convention ahead. Convention planners have two goals they'll now have to accomplish in three days. Republican leaders want to attack the president's record and portray Mitt Romney as a determined leader who can turn the country around. We need to tell the Mitt Romney story, and I think that's more of what you're going to see this week. Romney's running mate Paul Ryan attended a send-off rally at his old high school in Janesville, Wisconsin. It's good to be home. Ryan pushed back his trip to Tampa one day because of the weather. He's scheduled to speak Wednesday night. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Tampa, Florida. And that'll wrap things up from the Global News Desk to see more stories from across the country and around the world, such as what South Korean company has to pay Apple more than a billion dollars in damages. You can tune into Trojan Vision Global News right after the nightly news. Now back to you, Bailey. Thank you, Judson. And now Danielle Percival joins us for a look at sports. So, Danielle, the soccer team had a game this weekend. The volleyball team had a game this weekend. Just an action-packed weekend for Trojan sports. That's absolutely right, Bailey. Lots of Trojan sports going on. Not quite football season yet. That's coming up this next weekend. But there's still plenty of Trojan sports to get into. So let's get to it. Sounds good. It was a low-scoring affair for the Trojan soccer team over the weekend. The team split its matches in South Carolina, but did start the trip off on a good note. After going into the half against Wofford with no score, the Trojans' Jane Latif scored the only goal of the game in the 49th minute to put the Trojans up 1-0, which would be the final. On to Sunday, again it was a 1-0 final, but this time the Trojans were on the losing end. Troy fell to Furman 1-0 despite playing well enough to keep the game scoreless until the 85th minute. The Paladins' Stephanie DeVita scored the lone goal of the match. Goalie Maddie Winter had 11 saves for the Trojans, who will now await their action in the 2012 Trojan Classic, which begins in Troy on Friday. While the soccer team had a little success over the weekend, the volleyball team was getting their season started, but it wasn't a good start. The Trojans fell to 0-3 after a season-opening tournament in Georgia. 
Troy fell to Georgia Southern in its final contest of the Benson Hospitality Bulldog Invitational 3-1 on Sunday. Troy fell with scores of 25-11, 22-25, 25-17, and 25-23. Troy was led offensively by true freshman Blair Winston, who posted 11 kills with just three errors on the day for a .348 attack percentage. Brianna Cullity also hit 348 with nine kills and one error on 23 attempts, while also recording a team high four blocks. The Trojans were scheduled for their first home game tomorrow night in Sartain Hall against Auburn, but due to a scheduling conflict, that game is going to be moved back until next Tuesday. The Trojans will return to the court on the road on Friday. And it's finally football week here on Troy campus, and this weekend the Trojans will tee it up in Birmingham and get ready to kick off the 2012 season. Besides the excitement just over football season, what's one word that should get Trojan fans pumped up for 2012? Depth. 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 Depth is key. Think you've got it? According to these coaches, depth is an important part of the 2012 Thanks. Trojans. Then the biggest thing is depth. You know, being able to have guys. You know, you're not playing with 11 or 12. you got opportunity to play with Potentially 22, 24, 26 guys you can roll in and out um, I'll and toss, uh, be hey. more productive throughout the Bridget, game. And that's going, to be, uh, that's going to be big. But why is depth so important? It's not necessarily about the number of veterans. It's about having the bodies. It's going to be very big, especially early games, hot ball games. You know, you, you're going to get beat down by the sun and people are going to get tired early. Their nerves are up. So you, you better be able to have some guys to spin in there and spin out. And... Uh, we, uh, we feel better about that than we have in a long time. Over the years, depth has become increasingly significant with the pace the game of football is being played at. Teams that are playing faster and faster and faster, you've got you to be able to play some guys. And we've not done that, hadn't been able to do that very much in the last couple of three years. With the game, the way it's played right now, with the speed of the game, number of snaps you got to play, you better have more than 11 who can play for you. Then in this conference, you know, we play a lot of spread teams, a lot of teams that want to get in at least 70-plus snaps. Um, you know, having somebody to come in so you can catch a breath, you know, that's going to that's gonna help you a lot. If you're fresh and you out there and you know what to do and you're thinking, you, you know you're going to play your hardest and you're going to give it your all, knowing that you have somebody to come in and, you know, won't miss a step, won't miss a play. Depth isn't just something that happens overnight. It is a continual process of building up current players and also recruiting new guys. It's something that we have uh, got to continue to try to develop. And uh, we've got to, as all the coaches that I heard, bringing, bringing some guys on to help fill depth or, or, or maybe, maybe even take, take a position, you know, earn your starting job. Uh, and uh, we got some guys that uh, have uh, shown that they're interested in being uh, in the rank and file of the guys that play on Saturday. Well, Bailey, Judson, if you want to get in the football spirit a little early, we've actually got some Trojan flashbacks that are going to be airing on Trojan Vision. Uh, every night this week, we're going to have a different game airing at 7 o'clock. Tonight is going to be Troy against Marshall from 2004, so great way for fans to get pumped up and ready for the season. Absolutely. We'll be sure to tune in. And speaking of football, coming up on Troy Trojan Vision nightly, <laughs> the head football coach, Larry Blakeman. Today with a little bit of rain, will Hurricane Isaac send some more rain our way? Brittany? Maybe going into a rainy week. Stay tuned for your local net weather right after the break. Thank you. Thank you for serving. I love oh, Thank you. <laughs> we thank the troops for all the support they've given us. But how do we thank the ones who support them? Thank you for your service. Thanks USA provides scholarships to the spouses and children of our troops and helps give a future to the people who support the troops the most. Thanks for supporting them. Thank you for your dedication. Go to thanksusa.org to see how you can express your appreciation for what they do for our heroes. Thank you. Go to thanksusa.org now. Thank you. We are America's swim team, united by goggle marks, dry skin, and webbed feet, separated by seconds, bound by friendships. We have superhuman powers, superhuman lungs, superhuman strength, and we love that after the chlorine wears off and the water drains from our ears, we are still America's swim team. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. We are America's swim team. From the high definition digital production studios of Troy University. You're watching the award winning Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. 
And now Brittany Drawley joins us for a look at weather. Well, Brittany, this week, obviously, the weather has been a hot topic among students. Yes, it certainly has a lot. We're wondering if they're going to get an extra long break as we go into an already a Memorial Weekend. We can look at seeing that Isaac's coming our way and maybe seeing some rain, some closing of school. Students aren't sure, but right now we can take a look out at our North Quad Campus snapshot and see that it's actually very beautiful outside. Still cloudy. Looks like the rain's going to be rolling in, but right now we can see the skies are just sitting cloudy. Temperature around 86. Dew point at 70 degrees, humidity at 58%, barometer at 29.9 and fallen. Winds coming from the east to northeast around 8 miles per hour. Today's stats, a high of 89, a low of 74. Rain, not, none to be right now. Sunrise, 6.16 a.m. and a sunset at 7.13 p.m. We can see cloudy skies as we go into around the state. Mobile, already seeing some light showers from Isaac coming in. Mobile at 88, Huntsville at 93, Birmingham at 90 and cloudy also up north. Montgomery at 94 and cloudy, Troy 86, Phoenix City 89, and Dothan at 84. All seeing very cloudy as we look around the state. We can see current temperatures, Florida, Miami only at 81, Orlando 77, a little bit cooler. Birmingham still high at 90. As we look across, we can see everything sitting well into the 90s or the high 80s. Definitely a little bit nicer weather than the mid 90s we were experiencing. As we can see, there's a lot of action going on. A couple of low fronts and the low front leaving us here. But what we have our eye on is Isaac right now. As he sits into the Gulf of Mexico, where you know that he's going to hit shore. We're just not sure where just yet as he makes up his mind. Going in, we can see our satellite. We can see he's already sent a lot of rain across the state of Florida, missing Florida, but still sending them a lot of rain as it comes across our way. We can see already rain coming our way, so if it's not raining now, it will be shortly as we go into this evening. We can see where he's making up the eye of the storm just sitting right off the ghost coast. Tuesday, we can see rain is definitely expected for the southeast. Whether he comes our way or not, we're definitely going to be experiencing rain from tropical or the hurricane. We can see Wednesday as we go into Wednesday, same thing. Thursday, we're going to be experiencing a lot of rain as we go through our work week into Friday. So make sure you bring out the rain boots, your rain jackets. Be prepared. Be careful on the roadways. They're going to be wet and rainy as we go into the weekend. Don't be prepared to do much stuff outside and bringing everything indoors. And if you're going to be traveling for the weekend, be safe as you do it. We can see tonight's forecast. We're going to be seeing 60% chance of showers. We're seeing scattered showers coming and going. Straight thunderstorms possible, not too much, hopefully. Winds coming from the east to northeast around 14 miles per hour. We're going to be experiencing a lot of that and a low at 74. 60% chance of light rain in the a.m. And afternoon thunderstorms, same thing for tomorrow. Winds coming from the east to southeast, 10, gusting up to 20 miles per hour and a high at 86. As we go into our four-day forecast, we can see Tuesday, thunderstorms right across Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We can see high of 86 on Tuesday, a low of 74. And as we go in, we can definitely see, expect thunderstorms as we go into this week. Um, weather temperature is not going to be changing too much, actually, but we're going to be experiencing a lot of rain. So if we're going to be out there, definitely be safe. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, we might not getting, be getting the blunt of the hurricane hurricane in this, but people still need to take precaution and, and don't do any unnecessary driving for sure. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.